from Isaiah 60, uh, verses one through six. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the land, and thick darkness the peoples, but the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Inspired words for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And the gospel reading this morning is taken from Matthew, the second chapter, verses one through seven. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may, I may also go and pay him homage. Inspired, oh, when, had, when they had learned, okay. Oh, all good, all good. <laughs> um, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God, the text is alive and at work and um, always. And we got the gist and we might know the story, right? They come, they bring gifts, they bow down, they acknowledge who is Jesus. They are to, uh, watch, they follow the star, and the star shines, and they are led to the place where Jesus lay. And we covered a lot of this ground last week. So this morning, it is the Sunday where we celebrate the Epiphany. It is a Sunday when we recognize the 12th day of Christmas. It has been called Little Christmas. It has been called the day of the Epiphany, the day of the awakening to who Jesus was, who Jesus is, and we are all called to follow stars and signs to the place where we know Jesus, the place where we come that teaches us how to live, how to travel, how to go about our business. So today is the day where we celebrate the light rising from the sky, marking time and space as holy, where wisdom came into the world. And there are many stars that rise and so this morning, we're also beginning a sermon series on the gospel according to Bruce Springsteen, another star from the East that rose for many of us. I don't know about you, but I'm one of those people who is 
pretty big fan of Springsteen, and I can't be alone here, am I? Any Springsteen fans? One, two, come on, don't be ashamed. <laughs> And I, I'm one of those people who also thinks that you can't live in New Jersey and not be a fan of Bruce Springsteen. You can't live in New Jersey and not be a follower. And then I met my husband. <laughs> who, who reminds me that he's not from New Jersey. <laughs> but you can't live in New Jersey. And I'm one of the people who believes that you cannot be bishop of greater New Jersey without being a fan of Bruce Springsteen or without seeing him live. And Bishop Scholl knows my concern. <laughs> and I have pled my case to no avail. Not even to... Uh, put up the GoFundMe page to get him to one of those live shows or the Broadway performance. I am a fan and I am unapologetic about being a fan. And the truth be told is I spent way too many hours when I was little listening to Bruce. When I should have been studying, four or five or six of us were seated around the floor of a bedroom turned music den jamming to Bruce. And the memories of that and the way that music gets into our souls, we know it, right? Because we sing it and we live it and we learn it and it transports us. And some people, some superstars, have an impact on our lives in ways that sometimes scripture can't or doesn't. And sometimes we realize that those stars actually have a song to sing. Somebody like Bruce who's singing about real world issues or his concerns about what's playing out in our country or what it means to be born in the USA. Some of us hang on his words because they really do mean something to us. And I think it's true. And, you know, when I was working at the New York Times, I was very proud and pleased on the Sunday when the New York Times Magazine was published with Bruce on the cover with the title Steinbeck and Leather. And all of a sudden, all those hours that I spent on the floor of the music den made sense to me because it was as if I was reading the literature of the time, the poetry of my life. Listening to Bruce, sing a song that I could relate to. And isn't that what we hope that the scriptures would do or a decent sermon anyway? Make sense in our lives, say something that means something. Just like the superstars in our life have something to say. And so it is that we might realize that Bruce has something to say this week and over these next five weeks. You know, it's, um, Bruce tells his story um, effectively in his book. Anybody, anybody read the, the book? Uh, the book is entitled Born to Run. It came out in 2017. And I feel, uh, felt so incredibly moved about his candor, about his own life struggle. Uh, I felt um, inspired about the boundaries that he crosses and the stigma that he uh, cares not about when he talks about his depression. That even the boss might suffer from depression is a pretty powerful witness to a world in angst, a country uh, that is depressed. I think Bruce did us a favor and the book was published and then the Broadway uh, show uh, started and we watched celebrity after celebrity, newscaster after newscaster attend the show and you wonder about the people and the number of people who follow this particular star from the East who has something to say to us. And in the spirit of Epiphany and the star that rises, I just wanted to talk a little bit about The Rising um, as the album, album after album, CD after CD, Bruce has graced us with uh, his grapplings with family life 
and love. He has um, presented to us real, real emotion. And The Rising was written um, right around the time of 9-11. Bruce was already working on a song called My City of Ruins that was written about Asbury Park where he grew up. And it soon became a ballad for New York City along with Into the Fire, You're Missing, and The Rising. Bruce tells the story in his book about that day hearing the news and driving to the beach to the coastline from his home in Rumson. He talks about standing there watching smoke and flames rise from lower Manhattan. And he talks about a young man driving by in his car. And yeah, Bill, Bill and I have talked about how this story gets told in a couple different ways. And the young man yelling, Bruce, we need you now. As if Bruce is God or a savior, really. And yet, for so many, music is our outlet. For so many, music is what moves us. For so many, music is what transcends this earthly, what Bruce calls often trauma-inducing life that we live. He went home that day and turned to the people he loved, his wife, his children, and his music. Went into the studio and put together The Rising, a collection of songs that would move us, speak to us in ways that others have not, speak to us in ways that the scriptures can't. Because they're written in their own time and place, they're written in their own context. And so as we enter into this sermon series and as we talk a little bit about what Bruce or other musicians, performers can do for us, writers, right, poets can do for us, here's what's important. What's important that we remember, not unlike the star of Epiphany, is that all of these things point to something else, and that is God. So in the midst of our loving rock stars or following and the Grateful Dead or whoever it is that we're traveling around to follow, we remember who we really follow. We remember who we worship. We worship God. And people like Springsteen, who sing a song, of America now, America then, who sing a song of what it means to be a blue collar worker like his dad rising morning by morning, what it means to struggle in those relationships and what it means to live with very real depression. All of these boundaries he has helped us to cross and face and sing about, just like we do in the life of this church. We, we began the season of Advent talking about the songs we sing for Christmas. They were the songs of their times, the thought songs of their inspiration. And for the next five weeks, we're going to talk a little bit about Bruce. While we worship God in Christ, in the life of this church. I don't know about you, but where are the children this morning? Can you tell me about a star? And can you tell me, isn't, don't we sing a song about a star? What does a star do? Shine? Twinkle? Twinkle? How does it go? How I wonder what you are. So even the stars themselves 
Speak to the mystery of God. Lead us to God so that we can worship and celebrate God's love together, right? And that same baby who was born so that God's love could come into the world, so that God could show us the way to live, to make music in the heavens and make music on the earth, that same God sent his son to come to a table. And when the days and the story got a little depressing for Jesus, he decided that what he would do is make dinner for his friends. Are our communion servers in the back and will they come down this morning?